Well, welcome, folks. The acrimony was disgusting. It was horrible. But I think the wounds are going to be uh, there a little bit longer than we have any idea of. It will certainly last through the election. And it seems like there are a number of vulnerable senators who are going to be uh, very well taken out of their, their seats. The question is, what's going to ha happen to the House of Representatives? And by the way, there is no way the House can impeach Judge Kavanaugh or impeach the president. They just can't do it. They can make a motion to impeach, but at the same time, they've got to have a majority to do that, and there are too many Republicans to let that happen. Um, then, of course, to carry through, they've got to have a trial in the Senate, and there is no way they're going to get their uh, constitutionally mandated uh, 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 majority. It won't happen. There's a lot of talk. It's just bluster and theater. But the fundamental thing is, are we going to have a nation of laws? Are we going to have a nation that's, uh, that's made up of suspicion and, and acrimony? And it's that acrimony that is just so bad. Well, you know, the saga is surely not over, as you mentioned. And I, I think both parties are saying now that the issue has fired up their voters. They're heading into this year's midterms. And some Democrat leaders say if they win back Washington, they'll reopen the investigation into Judge Kavanaugh. Amber Strand has the strong, has the story. On this vote, the ayes are 50, the nays are 48. And with that, Brett Kavanaugh becomes the 114th Justice of the United States Supreme Court. But the bitter battle leading to that confirmation has consequences for the midterms and beyond. With protest and sexual assault allegations, Kavanaugh's confirmation came down to a handful of senators. The pivotal vote, Susan Collins of Maine who thought Kavanaugh should withdraw after hearing Dr. Christine Ford's testimony. But then when he came back with such a forceful denial and the anger and, and anguish that he showed, um, and then the lack of corroboration, led me back to the fundamental issues that are fundamental to our legal system, a presumption of innocence. The backlash from Collins' decision is yet to be seen. Although she's not up for re-election this year, a site raising money for her 2020 challenger crashed after the announcement. So far, it's raised more than $3.5 million. While the GOP won the confirmation battle, both sides are determined to win the war for the control of Congress. Republicans say the Democrats' tactics are reigniting the party ahead of midterms. We have been energized. We have been energized. The tactics that have been employed both by Judiciary Committee uh, Democratic senators and by the, you know, the virtual mob that's assaulted all of us in the course of this process has turned our base on fire. Democrats say the anger seen by scores of protesters on the Hill, many of which are women, will have a long-term impact. It is the people who are sitting in the Senate that they've elected who are making these decisions, and they're going to go to the polls, and they're going to vote uh, differently. While some Democrats, including Congressman Jerry Nadler, toy with the idea of investigating and possibly impeaching Kavanaugh, should the Democrats take the House, others say the party should be focused on the election and healing the divide. The Senate's role in our, in our yep. politics is not to just reflect the country, but to help heal and lead the country, and that's the course we should be on. Now Kavanaugh will attend a swearing-in ceremony Monday at the White House with President Trump, and his first vote could come as early as Tuesday. Amber Strong, CBN News, Washington. You know, I, I like uh, 60 Minutes. I think it's a very excellent uh, news um, uh, analysis sort of thing. Um, but I was watching the interviewer who was interviewing uh, Senator Collins, and he was saying, well, if Roe versus Wade uh, is overturned, then abortion becomes illegal. He was totally wrong. Here's what happens, and it's something that we ought to, all these demonstrators need to understand. If indeed a majority of the judges on the court don't want to hold with Roe versus Wade, and they want to overturn it, all they'll do is say, we are going to put that matter of the abortion back to the states. That's where it should have been all along. It is a matter of the police 
power of the states according to the Constitution. It should never have been federalized. It was a terrible mistake to make it a federal issue, but they did it. Now, if they say Roe versus Wade is overturned, what does that mean? It means that the matter of abortion now goes to the states, and each state will determine, according to its laws, what the uh, matter of abortion will be. Is it going to be legal? It can be. Is it going to be illegal? It can be. Is there going to be penalties appropriate to it? Yes, there, there may not be. There don't have to be any. So it's strictly, there are 50 states, and every state's going to have a chance to do something, which is the way it ought to be. It is not a federal matter, and then the local state legislatures can vote whatever they want to do uh, within reason. But to say immediately Roe versus Wade is overturned, abortion now becomes illegal, which is what the uh, interviewer in 60 Minutes said last night, He's wrong. It's not going to be illegal. It's not going to be anything. It's just not going to be a matter of protected by the Constitution, a federal matter. It will now be a state matter, which is what it always should have been. Well, now, uh, uh, the uh, midterms are only a few weeks away, and the Senate race is at least one state is too close to call. Ephraim Graham has that story from the CBN Newsroom. Pat, the Senate race in Florida highlights a deep divide. As Abigail Robertson shows us, voters in the Sunshine State have to choose between two political giants. The 2018 Florida Senate race is a clash of the titans, with two-time Republican Governor Rick Scott trying to unseat longtime Democratic incumbent Senator Bill Nelson. This race is destined to be tight till the very end because Florida is a very polarized state. Longtime Florida political analyst Susan McManus tells CBN News early estimates look like the margin of victory could be 1%. Partisanship is very deep in this state. The stakes are high. Money is rolling into this race from outside the state, obviously because Democrats are holding on for dear life to that seat. And Republicans are giving it their all to win it over. With 28% of the state registered as no party, however, Governor Scott's walking a fine line as to how closely he associates with President Trump. Governor Scott has a really tough time because he knows that he's got to capture a certain part of that no party affiliation independent vote and he's got to continue to hold on to Republicans and at the same time try to think about some of those conservative Democrats in the panhandle that might vote for him. McManus calls Florida the most difficult state for campaigning because of its diversity and size. Statewide candidates must be careful on sensitive issues like gun control. The issue itself plays quite differently depending upon where you are in Florida. For example, Rural voters see guns as necessary protection, while urban voters associate the weapons with two deadly events still fresh in their mind. They have to talk about issues that are important to Florida, how to fix things. Republican voters argue Nelson has been in office far too long. He's a career politician at this point. Senator Nelson is a, probably a great man, but uh, he hasn't been in Florida in a long time. Democrats believe he's done a good job fighting for Medicare, Social Security, and protecting Obamacare. I like his stance on the issues. McManus says at this point, it's still anyone's guess. There's still what would be considered a lifetime between now and November. Senator Nelson easily won his past elections, but Republicans are hopeful that with Governor Scott, they finally have a chance at defeating him. Reporting from Tampa, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Turning overseas now, Israeli security forces are searching for the Palestinian terrorist who murdered two Israelis Sunday. A mother of one and a father of three were shot as they worked in the Barkhan industrial zone near the city of Ariel. Security cameras captured images of the terrorists running from the scene. Israeli Knesset member Michael Oren tells CBN News there's only one way to describe that attack. What we're talking about here is evil. I'm not just talking about terrorism. Terrorism is sort of a sort of a, a, a neutral word, isn't it? It, it? it doesn't have a it doesn't have a moral quality to it. But what we're talking about are evil people, and evil exists in the world. I believe it. I've always deeply believed it. I've experienced myself. I've confronted evil, and we have to fight it. 
More than 3,000 Palestinians work alongside Israelis in the industrial zone. This is the first attack there in its 35 years of existence. American pastor Andrew Brunson marked his second year as a prisoner in Turkey Sunday. Senator James Lankford called on Turkey to release Pastor Brunson. Business leaders and religious freedom advocates are also working for Brunson's release. Jennifer Wishon has more. During a recent trip to the U.S., Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan met with hundreds of investors. His country's economy is failing due in part to U.S. sanctions, and he's appealing to American investors to help Turkey recover. In a letter to President Trump, the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom calls that troubling, given Erdogan's personal and public support for the continued unlawful detainment of American pastor Andrew Brunson. It's such an unstable um, country right now that um, in the way that the human rights violations that are occurring are so troubling, as we're seeing with Andrew Brunson, right. that we would really caution businesses to be careful about investing in Turkey. Pastor Brunson has been detained in Turkey for nearly two years on bogus charges. During that time, the Turkish lira has lost 40 percent of its value due to Erdogan's power grab and the diplomatic dispute between the U.S. and Turkey over Brunson. Still, Commissioner Nadine Mayenza says Erdogan is using Brunson as a pawn to play to his Islamist base and distract from the pain Turks are feeling in their pocketbooks. Their economy is spiraling and their currency has devalued and there's all sorts of problems in Turkey. So this is a really good distraction for the president to be able to point to this and say, see, look, I'm protecting our country from dangerous terrorists. And we all know Andrew Brunson is not a dangerous terrorist. You know, here in the U.S., on mainstream news channels, news outlets, we're not hearing about Pastor Brunson on a daily, weekly, even monthly basis. But in Turkey, right. it's quite different. I mean, everyone, it's a huge deal that there's this Christian American man who's been charged with terrorism. Right. He's been charged with trying to overthrow the government of Turkey, which, of course, is completely false. And um, the fact that he's in his home, we're so glad that he's not in prison, but we are concerned for his safety because if there was, um, it, it's not like he's in a secured fortress the way that we, we feel like he should be. So we, we actually obviously feel he should be returned immediately to the United States. There are rumors Turkey may release Brunson around his next hearing on October 12th. A Brunson release would be a tremendous political coup for President Trump, but not nearly as sweet as it would be for his family and the millions of Christians who are praying for him. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Praying for him indeed. Pat? I want to talk about the prophetic aspects of this, what you have in the Bible. I think it's important we understand uh, there's going to be an alliance of nations in the latter days that will come against Israel. And one of the key nations is identified as Gomer, and this apparently is Turkey. Turkey is going to be at the center. It's going to be Iran, known as Persia. It's going to be at least the southern, uh, uh, well, I, I'm trying to think exactly the name of what you'd call the, those southern provinces of, of the so, old former Soviet Union that are pr predominantly Muslim. They, they're going to be involved. Uh, Russia, you know, it's not Russia, it's Russia means the head. But anyhow, this coalition is going to include perhaps the Sudan, and uh, it's going to be nations that will go against Israel in the latter days. And when it looked like Turkey was going to swing back to democracy, I thought this is going to be, uh, you know, opposed to prophecy. And I know we'd like to see Pastor Brunson released. I'd like to see Turkey become a um, wonderful partner in our uh, world uh, order. But I, I think it's not going to happen. And, you know, when you read in Revelation that the churches in Asia, all of those churches are, are located in what's now Turkey. Uh, it, it's amazing. You know, Thyatira and all those churches, they're all in Asia. I mean, they're all in Turkey. So it's a very important uh, part of God's uh, overall order. But I'm telling you, it's not going to turn Western. It's not going to turn pro-democracy. And Erdogan is a strong Muslim dictator, and he is really fulfilling biblical prophecy. We don't like what he's doing. We don't like what's been done to Pastor Brunson. 
and uh, the American Center for Law and Justice, which I am the president, has fought very hard to see him released, and we hope it happens. But nevertheless, that president has taken power. He is, he's null, nullified the military. He's nullified the, the judiciary, nullified the legislature. He is ruling as a dictator, and he's the one that talked about a clash uh, between uh, the cross and the scepter. Uh, the, 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 he's the one that talked about it, and I think he believes it finally that there's going to be a clash. And so he's, he's fulfilling prophecy, and we may not like it, but that's what's going to happen. And the question is how soon, and is Israel going to be ready for it? Now, the other thing we need to talk about, we've just uh, survived, and the poor people in North Carolina and South Carolina are actually just beginning to recover from devastating flooding. But now this new set of uh, hurricanes is aiming at Florida coming up through the Gulf. Ephraim has that. Pat, Florida's governor has declared a state of emergency ahead of Tropical Storm Michael. The storm is predicted to make landfall this week as a Category 2 hurricane with winds of up to 100 miles an hour. The governor also activated 500 members of the Florida National Guard ahead of the storm. He has not ordered any evacuation yet, but forecasters advise residents along the coast to monitor the storm's progress. At least a dozen people are dead after a strong earthquake struck Haiti. The U.S. Geological Survey says a 5.9 magnitude quake hit and then a 5.2 aftershock rattled northern Haiti. More than 150 people have been injured. Authorities say victims are without electricity or shelter, and hospitals are indeed overflowing. Praying for them as well. Pat? Uh, our Operation Blessing has had extensive activity in Haiti, and our hearts go out to the people of Haiti. They have suffered so much, and they, their government is such a mess. They have been under the dictatorship of, like, Papa Doc Duvalier and then his son, and the Tantan Maku and all the rest of it, they have, those people have just been suffering constantly. And now to have a hurricane of the, I mean, a, a, an earthquake of this magnitude strike, uh, we will do everything we can with Operation Blessing to help them, to assist them, to have medicine, to have clean water, to have all the things that they need. But they have really suffered. And I would just call on people, please pray for Haiti. Um, those people deserve better. But, you know, they, they have had uh, voodoo as the official religion. That's what their president uh, said. Yeah. Voodoo is their official religion. Uh, and they, they need to, you know, cast all the shackles that have been placed upon them. But the government has been so corrupt and it's so bad, but this is, has nothing to do with the government. This has to do with natural disasters. So we will be there to help the people of Haiti because we love them and care for them and want to do everything we can to give them a better life.